Hello everyone, I'm Jay Keeler Johnson, filling in for Evan Hammonds on this week's episode of After the Wire, which is brought to you by EquaAid, the makers of Bodybuilder, Airblast, and other fine natural products. On Saturday, with one week remaining until the Kentucky Derby, Churchill Downs began their spring meet with a 10 race program highlighted by the Grade 3 Derby Trial Stakes. In the past, the one mile derby trial was truly a trial for the Kentucky Derby, with such notable names as Citation, Dark Star, Tim Tam, Hill Gale, and Black Gold winning both the derby trial and the derby itself. In recent years, the race has been more of a prep for the Preakness Stakes, but this year's renewal featured some extra excitement thanks to the presence of Bayern, a well-regarded colt from the barn of Bob Baffert. Coming off of a third place finish in the Arkansas Derby, Bayern was sent off as the 4-5 favorite in a field of 8, with recent fairgrounds maiden winner Embellishing Bob the second choice at just under 5-1. The two Colts got off to alert starts and quickly hooked up in a battle for the early lead, with Bayern maintaining a half-length advantage through fractions of 23.23, 46.62, and 111.19 seconds. As the field made their way around the turn, Bayern and Embellishing Bob remained together with little between them, but as the pair entered the home stretch, Bayern began to drift out under left-handed urging and bumped several times with Embellishing Bob. Bayern straightened out just past the 3 16 pole and maintained a straight course for almost a furlong after that, but began drifting out again in the final 16th, hurting Embellishing Bob toward the outside while Myositis Dan came running with a powerful late charge. The trio hit the wire together in the time of 1 minute 36.73 seconds, with the photo finish camera revealing Bayern the winner by a nose over Embellishing Bob. However, following a steward's inquiry and a jockey objection, Bayern was disqualified from first and placed second for interfering with Embellishing Bob in the homestretch. Owned and bred by Martin Cherry, Embellishing Bob is a son of Northern Fleet out of the Defreer Mare Kirsch. He's trained by Steve Margolis and was ridden to victory by Brian Hernandez Jr. Congratulations to all of the connections. Since we have a bit of time left, and since the Kentucky Derby is now less than a week away, I'd like to take a moment to review a few Kentucky Derby prep race replays and share a few thoughts on the seven Colts that I view as the key contenders in the run for the Roses. First and foremost is California Chrome, romping winner of the San Felipe Stakes and San Anita Derby. With his combination of tactical speed and ability to finish up strongly, he looms as the heaviest Kentucky Derby favorite since Big Brown in 2008. His last four starts, all victories, have been spectacular, especially his five-length triumph in the San Anita Derby three weeks ago. Assuming he draws an outside post position in the Kentucky Derby, which will enable him to work out a nice stalking trip while staying clear of traffic, California Chrome should prove very, very tough to beat on the first Saturday in May. Two other horses that I really like are Hopportunity and Candy Boy, the second and third place finishers in the San Anita Derby. Hopportunity gamely gave chase to California Chrome down the San Anita home stretch and finished well clear of the rest of the field while not being urged particularly hard in the final furlong. This race, coming just three weeks after his gritty victory in the Grade 2 Rebel Stakes at Oakland Park, could be considered a prep race in the truest sense and should set Hopportunity up well for the run for the roses. As for Candy Boy, he flashed more early speed than usual in the San Anita Derby, tracking California Chrome through respectable fractions before being outkicked in the home stretch by the top two finishers. That was his first start in two months, so he should be much sharper for the Kentucky Derby, where a return to his off the pace running style could bring about a vastly improved performance from the son of Candy Ride. Leaving San Anita behind, there are a couple of horses coming out of the Arkansas Derby that have really caught my eye. The first is Danza, who won the race by five lengths at the shocking odds of 41 to 1. It's fair to question if the son of Street Boss can duplicate that performance on Derby Day, but it's hard to ignore the fact that he ran the final three furlongs of the Arkansas Derby in just over 37 seconds, a very strong time that suggests the 10 furlong distance of the Derby is well within his range. I was also impressed by Rydon Curlin, who rallied from well off the pace to finish second. After watching the son of Curlin flash speed in all three of his starts this year, 
It was encouraging to see him return to the running style that earned him an impressive third place finish in last year's Grade 1 Champagne Stakes at Belmont Park. His chances for success under the Twin Spires could increase considerably if the track is wet on Derby Day. For not only is he bred to relish an off track, he will be ridden by three-time Derby winning jockey Calvin Burrell, who has two wins and a third in the last three derbies run over an off track. And of course, we know that Bo Rail will have Ride on Curlin as close to the rail as reasonably possible throughout the race. Rounding out my personal list of top derby contenders are Wicked Strong, who rallied impressively to win the Wood Memorial Stakes at Aqueduct, and Intense Holiday, winner of the Risen Star Stakes and runner-up in the Louisiana Derby. Both Colts possess strong finishing kicks and should appreciate the expected fast pace of the Kentucky Derby. I'm especially intrigued by Intense Holiday, who had to steady on the far turn of the Louisiana Derby before having some trouble switching leads at the top of the stretch. After overcoming these obstacles, he finished up well in the final few hundred yards and could be a bit of an overlay in the Kentucky Derby. I'd like to thank you all for watching After the Wire. Be sure to tune in next week as Evan Hammonds recaps the 140th running of the Kentucky Derby.